real dark. All right. If I was going to solve this, ladies and gentlemen, the main important, pro main important thing we need to do when we're doing a linear inequality is we need to just treat it just like a regular equation. So I can write this as y equals 1 half x plus 2, right? And the reason why we like to write it in our equation, because that should hopefully remember that we can write things in slope-intercept form. Remember y equals mx plus b, where b was our y-intercept. b was our y-intercept. Remember, that tells us where the graph crosses the y-axis. So on your graph, this should be the first thing that you guys want to plot. So here we see my y-intercept is at 2. So my y-axis is right here, and that's my x-axis. So I go up 2, and I make a dot. Because at 2, that's where the graph crosses my y-axis. Your y-intercept, right there, plus 2. The first thing you guys should be doing with your graph, OK? Everybody should make sure they have that down. If they didn't have it down, you should probably should be writing that down. Right, Adrian? So now the next thing we need to do is now we need to determine, well, how do we get to our next point? We need to look at the slope. Remember, the slope is our number that is in front of our variable x. So the slope tells us how to get from one point to our, ne our next point. And remember, our slope is a ratio. It's your change in your y coordinates over the change in the x coordinates. All right, That's what we call our slope. So if my change, so if we look at this, if I have my slope as 1 over 2, so that means the change in my y coordinates is a positive 1. So does that mean I'm going to be traveling up or down to get to my next point? And you could say up 1. So I'm going to go up 1. Then the change in my x is going to be a positive 2. So am I going to go to the left or to the right? right. To the right. So you can go over 2 units to the right. And there we go. I found my next point. All right. Now you get, I should also know that you can also go down and to the left to get to the same point. What you'll notice is if you do the exact opposite, you'll get your exact same line. So instead of going up and to the right, you can also go down and to the left to get the same point. But then you guys notice, oops, before we graph our line, now we have um, points that we can create a line. Now remember, on an inequality, on a number line, we had either an open or a closed dot. We don't deal with dots right now. Now we're dealing with lines. So the important thing that you want to make sure that you have done is you want to make sure that when you're looking at either a dash or a solid line, that you make sure you determine when is it going to be dashed or when is it going to be solid. So the important thing I'm going to do is, since this is this was when it was less than or greater than, correct? But So now, instead of using an open dot, we're going to use a dashed line. Okay. And if it had a greater than or equal to or less than or equal to it, you'd use a solid line. So the last thing we need to do is now we need to determine well, what points are going to make this inequality true. So we need to pick a test point. And the best test point I can tell you guys to pick is 0, 0. The only time we don't want to use 0, 0 is when the graph goes through 0, 0. Because then that doesn't tell you where do you shade above and below. So now, remember, a coordinate has an x and a y coordinate. x comma y. So therefore, 0, 0, you can plug in for x and y. So therefore, I have 0 equals, I'm sorry, not 0 equals, 0 is greater than 1 half times 0 plus 2. 0 is greater than 2. Is that true or false? Hold on. Is that true or false? False. Is 0 greater than 2? Hold on. So since that's false, you're going to shade above the line. Okay? Hey, cool. 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 Cool.